Hi. What's up? Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hey, my name is Lucas. And my name is Jacob. The Bro Show Podcast. Welcome back, bros. Yeah, um, I hope you had a slippy week, slippy slidey <laughs> week. You know, going in a slip inside is fun. It sounds like a bad tone, but it's actually a fun tone. A slip inside sounds like a bad term? No, let's go on a, I hope you had a slip in sliding week. Oh, it sounds like, yeah. oh, you had a horrible week, but no, it was actually a great week. Welcome back, Daddy Gang. It's your father, Alex. Alexis Cooper. Daddy gang. <gasps> Why don't we do a whole episode or we, we, we be another podcast, but don't mention it. That would be fun. Acting, Whoa, the theater. Th- thing about it is that that is me every episode. It's like, who am I this week? Oh, yeah. We're all born naked and the rest is drag. I know. It's like no one knows the Chewy, so I might as well just put on a mask. Actually- <laughs> <joking>. <laughs> but that would actually be fun doing a whole episode as daddy gang. And like, I'm Alex Cooper and you're Sophie. You know that Sophia, you know how they got in a fight? I thought oh it God. all ended. But we pretend like we're meeting. I have the funny thing is the like only episodes of um, Call Her Daddy I've listened to are the Miley Cyrus episode and the Holly Madison episode. So I actually never watched, I never listened to Daddy Gang, um, Call Her Daddy when they were both the hosts. But that would be, maybe that could be like our new podcast thing. Like the whole, every episode's that. Well, this episode basically is um, a Call Me Daddy episode. Is that what? Call, call Her Daddy, Daddy episode because yeah we have the titles are, wrong like we aren't like up with the time so because people are gonna tell us their confessions so oh, yeah um, daddy gang so the yeah. episode that i've watched is the miley cyrus one and then i've seen like clips of one some and i feel like this is something that they do oh yeah i've watched them their vlog channel though that was entertaining i didn't get into the podcast but like them they went to like la and then they they would just like do all these vlogs and they were so entertaining Oh, I'm not, yeah, so, so I was kind of sad that they broke up. I like. Wish- I love how I love addressing this drama. It's like, boom! Everyone's over this. This all happened like a year ago. <laughs> We're talking about the daddy gang breakup. I know, so late. <laughs> but um, I think more people should do those styles of YouTube videos. So, a few people they did them. Whitney Cummings. I love when people do these videos where they're like four minutes. It kind of reminds me of like older YouTube in the four minutes. And they're just, like, them doing things. I know about Kyle Daddy was a vlog. Whitney Cummings did, like, what's in my bathroom? But she made it so funny. Oh, it was, like, yeah. four minutes of just funniness. It's, like, a Instagram or TikTok video, but, like, longer. So, but yeah. But then it doesn't get recommended because the algorithm. And you don't get to put multiple ads in to make so much money. But who knows how the algorithm works? Like, we oh, act yeah. like we know how it works. But I feel like we don't even know anything. Oh, yeah. Like, the I only have thing I noticed is, like, with my channel, though, if I ever do a video under 10 minutes, it just flops for my channel personally the algorithm i have to do long videos yeah so i don't so this is from my knowledge of the algorithm it's like a thing where it's like if you keep uploading 20 minute videos and i feel like you have to keep uploading 20 minute videos or if you're uploading five minute videos i feel like you have to keep uploading five minute videos i feel like you can't randomly upload a 10 minute video and then upload a 30 minute video because then like because there's this thing with YouTube that when you go on the analytics page, it says, what's your usual watch time? So if you upload a 30-minute video, the usual watch time might be like 13 minutes. And then if you upload a 10-minute video, the usual watch time might be like six minutes. So then they might get uffed up and be like, what the uffs? YouTube in the, like, in the brain, the algorithm might be like, what the uff Oh, yeah. You have to train. The the algorithm gets trained by how you act. So um, like David Dobrik, for example, since he always did 420 videos, the algorithm knew what to expect, pushed it out. But if he did a one minute video, they'd be like, what is this? Like, put it in the trash. But I don't, what, it, it might not work like that though. It does. I know everything about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, enough about the YouTube algorithm. Bro of the week. Yes, 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 honey. Lana Del Rey is a bro of the week. So she sent us this screenshot of a Lana Del Rey tweet. Her name is 99 Cent Lips, is what she wants to go by. She sent us this photo. It's a screenshot of a Lana Del Rey tweet and a photo of. Her as a devil, but that it wouldn't let me make that the desktop. So sorry, oh. ninety nine cent lips. Are you sent this, so this is also your photo. You have your um, you have your child um settings on. Oh yeah, what it control. wouldn't let me. Yeah, but the the tweet from Lana Del Rey says 
You should feel lucky to have my $79 lipstick kisses all over your face. You're probably used to those cheap tricks kissing you with their 99 cent lips. Finally, something I can relate to every time I'm wearing my Chanel lip balm that I got at Bounties in New York. I haven't, I don't eat, like I never, I just bought it once. Every time I use that, NYC. I just, everyone's just like, you're so fancy and rich. Like, it's so crazy. It's like, oh my gosh. Have you used the whole thing yet? You still have it, right? Oh, I think I said this on a previous podcast. It's like my good luck charm now. But did you ever finish it? No, it's still there. Oh, you can't I mean, maybe your birthday. Honestly, it wasn't even that good. Like, yeah, like it's, like- it's like, it's $30 Chanel chapstick, but it's like, Okay, this isn't even good. This is like cow mux, two dollars yeah. at Walmart. So like, I just want to let you know, like, don't baby your luxury goods. Like, you should have used it. Now you can't use it, but you are saving it for oh a special day. But the special day never. No, came. I honestly don't think I'm ever gonna use yeah, it. Yes, so now it's over because it's overdue and you wasted it. But I, I didn't even. It's I, like all these people buy Versace clothes but never wear them. Just can't actually. I know I've never met anyone who's bought Versace clothes. I don't. I've never. But I'm just saying, like, we used to watch, we've already talked about this, but we used to watch this, like, luxurious YouTuber, and his quote was, don't baby your Birkin. He said, you have to just use it. Stop babying it. You know? Yeah. Just some good old advice from the daddy gang. But um, This made me think of, like, yesterday I was browsing my YouTube channel, like, this thing, like, what ideas should I do? And I watched a video from, like, 2019 that isn't even that long ago. And I was like, what? What? Like, I, Wait, from your, of yourself? Yeah, a video of my own video from 2019. <laughs> I watched like two minutes of it. Um, and I was like, wow, like I changed so quickly. I feel like oh, yeah. that person is a different person. And I actually believe that. It's like, it's me, but a different me. It's so weird. Why are you talking about Versace bring that up? I don't know. I just, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just thought about that yesterday. I I know I watched it yesterday. And then when you brought that up. Oh, because you're talking about uh, Chanel Lip Balm, I think, like, oh, 2016. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. You're going through the years in your life for so much changes. So every year you're a different person. I feel like, I don't know, it might always happen. Because, you know, you just continue growing. That's I bet, like, Grandma watches a video from her from five years ago, and she's like, wait, what? Oh, my God, I was so cringy back then. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, yeah, the bro of the week, she considers herself the 99 cent lips in this Lana Del Rey tweet. So, love you, girl. Thanks for supporting the bro show. If you guys ever want to be bro of the mother effing week, head on over to lucasandjacob.com. Join the top tier, and you'll be entered into the sweepstakes. Yeah, I'm so annoyed with thanks. the effing camera. Why is it doing that? Yeah, I mean... And then it's... once I mentioned it, it stopped. It keeps doing this creepy thing where it's trying to focus on every little thing in the room, but I guess we'll just leave it. It's supposed to be top tail movie director cameras, and then it just ends up not focusing. I just moved my tongue around my teeth, and I felt like a piece of egg white. It was just sitting up there. We get it. You eat egg whites, not Oh, eggs. yeah. I started eating egg whites this week for, like, extra protein, so I'll probably get really strong soon. You believe in protein? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah so last week we said send us your confessions oh by the way thanks for being brother week i didn't say that and i feel like an asshole so yeah thanks for being brother week and supporting us but last week we said send us your confessions and mm-hmm. we got a lot yeah like one of them said like how do i lash out on my grandma i don't I know, know if we included that but... that was the last one because that was the most recent email but yeah the the subject of the email is how advice on let me see what it actually said i can get word for word um it said my grandma can be very annoying oh how do i not lash out at her okay i swear to god when i this is a mandela effect because we both read it as how do i lash out at her no this okay well okay even though it could be the Mandela effect, well, this has happened before. I don't know what you would call it, but okay. So I'm texting someone, and then I think they're saying something else, and then I look back at the text, and I realize that I missed one word, and then it's like, oh, wait, yeah. I thought they were saying something else this whole time. And it's so weird. Like you're like my brain didn't see not this whole entire time. I it's so know, not. and I think the reason why I didn't see the not is because you told me you're like, oh my god, this email's so funny. So then I read it how you told me. That sounds so much funnier. How do I lash out at Maybe. her? Like, I thought they wanted advice. Like, how do I, like, lash out at my poor grandma? I know. That's what I thought, too. Maybe I'm just such a pessimist. I always see, like, the negative side. And I just... Oh, my, that's probably my, it. My brain just... I did it out to see the negative. You do that a lot. Yeah, maybe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bum, should we start with this one first? This isn't really a confession, but let's just start with it. Yeah, let's get into it. She said, love my grandma, 
But sometimes she's really effing annoying. I live with her too, so our relationship is different than most people's with their grandma. So I feel like I've been seen as a bitch when I complain about her to other people because they have a different relationship with her grandma. Oh, okay, so she lives with her grandma, so she feels bad that she talks so much shit about her grandma, but she's like, most people only see their grandma like, I don't know, once a month at the most. So like they aren't going to get so annoyed with their grandma that they have built up anger like she does. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a different type of grandma, um, grandchildren Sitch. relationship. Anyway, continuing on, she says, anyways, as I'm writing this, she's pretty much yelling on the phone because for whatever reason, she makes her voice very loud when she's talking on the phone. Right now, she's telling my aunt her exaggerating events. Okay, this <laughs> this happens with every... Okay, so I've seen this joke on Twitter and stuff, but like every mom, like at least with my mom and then these jokes on Twitter say that their mom did this too. They always like talk so loud on the phone. I know, but I feel like I do that. <laughs> oh shit, did I just touch something? I thought I touched something on the soundboard. They just, yeah, they just, because our mom, when she talks on the phone, well, I don't think about it anymore, but like when I was little, I remember being like, why are you talking so loud? And then I would always like, like, I'd be so annoying poking her, asking her questions. <laughs> and it was just so Oh funny. yeah, but I know for a fact I do that. Because I remember even just recently I was on the phone, like, and um, Matthew said, why are you, why are you yelling so loud on the phone? I was like, oh, that's just my natural like phone voice. Oh yeah. I like, not even on the phone. Like I'm always like, I feel like sometimes I'm just loud. Like I'm inside of a store and I just like some reason i'm just loud oh yeah but i feel like i don't know if this is just some something for like millennials and under because like that's when the social awkwardness really hit the world but um how come it seems like i feel like no one ever wants to talk on the phone in front of other people like that is embarrassing like if you're in a group of people and like you randomly <laughs> pick up the phone and start talking like that is the epitome of embarrassment <laughs> no that's what's so funny like i don't know why but f okay i can Talking to people in real life, what up? I can do it in front of other people. But then, yeah. as long as you're talking on the phone, it's feel like, it always feels like when I'm talking on <laughs> the phone in front of other people, like I'm doing a skit and I just can't I deal. hate that. Then I'm paying, then I'm just thinking about, oh, like, what are these people around me thinking? So I'm not even listening to the person on the phone, you know? Yeah. That's just, why, like, these shows like Selling Sunset, it's this reality show on Netflix where all these realtors are in one room and they pick up the phone in the one room and do these negotiations. I'm like, did, how did they get over that? Oh, yeah. Because I sure. even remember I went, I visited one of my friend's workplaces in LA and they had a phone room. Like it was like a separate room you go to where you can talk on the phone. So like they knew that people felt awkward. Oh, that's actually nice. That's I nice. know, but like it's in Selling Sunset. They were just bare, raw in the room in front of everyone. I know. It's like, yeah, it just is like having everything out there. You're naked at that moment. I know. Stripped. But anyway, so her grandma talks on the phone is annoying. And she said, I'm just going to list out everything my grandma does that annoys me. A few weeks ago, my, dram my grandma tried to take our... Did I say my grandma? My grandma tried to take our dog on a walk, and he suddenly started running after an off-leash dog that ran by him. This caused my grandma to fall on the ground, and she kind of hurt her side. But she's telling my aunt how that fall gave her a black eye, which is a straight up lie because I have yet to see it. She doesn't wear makeup either, so it's not like she covered it up. Okay. How about with <laughs> each lie, we just dig deep. So with this okay. lie, uh, I, I'm going to have to give your grandma a pass just because I could see me accidentally getting into one of these lies. Like I could see me <laughs> yes. walking around Target and, and, I, and I grab a thing of pasta and, the, and, and I bring the pasta in my face and it scratches my face. I could see me calling like going to someone's house or calling someone and and accidentally saying it hurt so bad i was almost bleeding it was so scary <laughs> i know that's not reality but it just happens somehow that's so funny when you experience something with someone else and like each time one of you guys tell it you kind of exaggerated <laughs> a little bit more yeah and then it's like it turns out being this story it's like that just was fiction and now it's just a fictional story yeah like that's why youtube story times like you have to take them with a grain of salt. I know. Like, remember people expose <laughs> Tana Manjo for, like, exaggerating things, but it's like, boo, that's what makes them entertaining. Yeah, because if something's, like, really, like, scary or something, you're going to over-exaggerate. I know, and it just makes it more entertaining for the viewer. But at the same time, like, I get what this um, person's coming yeah. from because it's kind of like, yo, bored face ass lie. I know. Like, we don't live with their grandma, so we don't... Maybe she constantly is just making up everything. <laughs> Okay, the email goes on. She always has something to complain about or comment on, whether it be how weird a person's hair is or how she's tired from making my bed, which I don't even like her to do because she moves my stuff, yet she still does it when I ask her not to. Her hands are very dry, so I hate when she touches my skin and when they rub onto clothing and I low-key get lint stuck on them. <laughs> Wait, I don't like when people touch me in general, but the dry hands make it worse. If me and my sisters don't do something we weren't... 
oh, if me and my sister do something we weren't supposed to do, she conveniently brings it up when my parents are in the vicinity. Um, she never gets all this stuff off dishes when she hand washes them. <laughs> <laughs> whenever she brings, whenever she brings it, whenever my mom brings it up to her, she goes on a rant how she's been cleaning dishes for a year, so she knows what she's doing. Oh, for years, she's constantly moving everything around. Overall, my main pet peeve is she exaggerates and loves to complain. Sometimes I'm kind of pissy to her; she's annoying me, but I always feel bad when I do that. So please help me. Okay, some of your complaints. I do have to say, I don't really valid. Like, the cleaning dishes one, it's like, it's like, unfortunately, like, you might have to clean your own dishes. I know, but from an outside perspective, oh, oh yeah, my grandma was cleaning her dishes. Oh, yeah, but with the dishes, one, I don't get, but um, with the um, making a bud one, I get that one, because it's kind of oh, like, yeah. why do you complain about it when I say that I can make also, it? Also, it is one of those things where <laughs> if you live with someone, like, things that annoy you about them, other people aren't going to understand. You know what yeah, I mean? Because it is, that's true. when you really think about it, like, if you have ever had, like, an annoying roommate or something, it's really minor things, but, like, it isn't anything to actually be mad about, but it just builds up over time because you're always with them. Oh, yeah, and then you see it happening, like, 50 times. Yeah, and then you and slowly th- resent them. Yeah. So if you have a roommate right now, like, they might resent you. So don't be, um, once, like, the lease ends and they never talk to you again don't be <laughs> shocked yeah but i mean so how do you not lash out your grandma so obviously some of the complaints are annoying most of them are maybe so. just try to view it through a humor lens just like when she's over exaggerating just laugh and be like that's grandma like if she however old she is now like there's probably no point of trying to change her you know oh that's this is such a good is. tactic yeah so if someone's doing something that's something that's annoying that's not directly affecting you so like Obviously, if someone's poking you, you're going to have to say something. Yeah. But if, someone's, if it's not directly affecting you, then then just view it in, like, a different type of way. Yeah, just, just view it as a funny thing. Like, oh, grandma's such a weirdo. Like, just laugh at it. You don't have to get mad at it. Or you could um use this madness to write a book about the the, the annoying, angry grandma. Oh, yeah. Put, yeah. <laughs> Start angry poetry. Express it through art. Do a painting that expresses how much you effing hate your grandma. You know? Yeah, and the funny thing about it is that, like, Obviously, you're mad at, you're annoyed about your grandma, but at the end of the day, you obviously still love your grandma. It's such a funny thing when stuff like that happens, because at the oh, end of the yeah. day, it's not like you're you're like, oh my gosh, I fucking hate you, but you feel yeah. like that, but you don't actually. Yeah, like you effing hate your grandma, but like of course, like deep down, like you're like, oh, I like her, I love her, even though you effing hate her. But um, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, good luck with your annoying ass grandma. That was a good confession. I'm glad I know that now. Oh yeah, thank you. Do you want to read the next one? Um, yeah. So basically, a few days ago, I had a dream where I was in a po- a polygamous relationship with Lucas and Nick Jonas. All the tea is, Lucas was totally obsessed with me, and Nick was totally obsessed <laughs> with Lucas. And Lucas was down to date Nick Jonas, and Nick Jonas was okay, I guess. I'll date her since Lucas will be involved. So my dream... So in my dream, we were all in a bed. I j- <laughs> just ready to go to sleep. And I was teasing Nick about how he doesn't even like me. And then we all hugged and fell asleep. So you guys were in a polygamous relationship. And you like Nick Jonas, but not the girl. No, Nick Jonas was obsessed with me. But I liked this girl. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So Nick Jonas was obsessed with me. And then I liked this girl. And Nick was like, I don't even like her. But like, since Lucas likes her, like she's a, she can join our thing. Oh, my gosh. So I, I wonder what that means. Like maybe Nick Jonas is obsessed with me, you know? If he met me, he'd be obsessed with me. I know. Who That's knows? That's prob- probably what this means. Because you guys haven't met yet, right? No. I don't know if you guys like I mean, we briefly met in Hollywood. But it you guys didn't actually in, talk. Yeah. I mean, I did say his name, Nick Jonas, and he looked at me. Oh, so that probably was step one. It was when he was dating Delta Goodrim. She's like an Australian pop star. Oh, I haven't. Have you listened to him? music? It was at the debut. In Hollywood, I used to always stay there. I'm at the W. <laughs> We're making W. <laughs> <laughs> the Tana Manjo song. <laughs> at the W. <laughs> making W. Sorry for your lies. What'd you say? Um, I'll take that O for you. Oh, yeah. Jump on that beat, act different. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bop. Why did she stop making rap music? Like, I know everyone has their issue with Tana. She's done a lot of bad things, but... At the end of the day, like, why aren't you a rapper? Well, I have so many people that want to be rappers. Elijah Daniel, why did he stop doing raps? I loved Lil Fox. It's like, also, like, I guarantee if Tana released Hefner four years ago, if she would have kept releasing hit after hit, she would probably be on the same level as, like... Bad Baby. 
yeah rico nasty like that type of level which is like so big yeah yeah so she what could have been I mean, she still has time. I know. Oh, I, I yeah. I don't think it's a could have been. I think it's a if you if you want to, you still can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So with this one, um, I mean, the confession is deep. It's like who knows if this is real or not. It could be another reality. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Next up, next confession from you, bros, <laughs> daddy gang. Um, I have a very very deep crush on one of my coworkers, but I'm in a relationship. I have been in a relationship for the past three years. Everything has been great. No issues. We never fight and seem to have a healthy relationship. But a few months ago, a new guy started at my work. At first, I didn't find him that attractive. But as I've gotten to know him, I feel like I'm falling for him deeply. I get the vibe that he's into me as well. He always compliments me, asks me how I'm doing in my relationship, and even drives me to and from work because I don't have a license. I found myself making any excuse I can just to be around him. I think about him all the time. I dream about him. Imagine what our lives could be like if we were together. Nothing has happened. It's just like a friendship type of thing. However, I feel so guilty. My boyfriend hasn't done anything wrong, but I can't help how I feel. I want to pursue something with this new guy, but one, I don't know how he feels about me for sure. Two, I don't want to risk what I have now for something that might end up being all in my head. And three, I still love my current boyfriend, but also don't want to break his heart. What do you guys think? Should I ignore the crush, flip a coin? I don't know. Would love your advice. So with stuff like this, I I will try to give you advice, but I'm literally pulling it out of my asshole. Because Same. I mean, we're neither of us a relationship therapist. Yeah, plus I've like never really been in a serious relationship, so I don't know. It's kind of just like... But I kind of feel like if you have that deep of a crush on someone that you're literally envisioning what your life is about, like dreaming about him, like I almost feel like maybe you just aren't into your current boyfriend, you know? So it's yeah. like, would you really want to drag him along? Like, imagine if it was the other way around and he was fantasizing about some coworker and like wishing he was with her, but he was like, oh, I'll just stay with this girl because what if the coworker doesn't like me? Like, you'd probably be pissed if he was doing that. Yeah. Oh, like it could be a thing where I was going to say, this probably won't work, but I was going to say like you could, um, <laughs> you could tell him about it and just say like, I just want to be with you though. And then, and then you could like, you could say, I'm going to go on one date with him though. <laughs> but that won't work. That, I know, like, unless only... he's into like polygamy and stuff, but um, maybe oh, yeah, you don't maybe... even want to be in polygamy. So that's that. <laughs> if only this was that. like Twilight, because I'm reading the Twilight series. I'm on the last book um, for the first time. And Edward, like, is down for Bella to experiment with Jacob. Oh, yeah. So, oh, oh, you could but make he... it an open relationship. Yeah, but I'm I assuming. Mean, but that's a whole other thing. It sounds like you just feel bad for your current. I mean, then again, I'm just going off this one paragraph, but it sounds like you feel bad for your current boyfriend. I'm like, no one wants you to be with them because you feel bad for them. Like, that's just rude. I know, because. Obviously, I, I know you're not trying to be rude, but if he knew. Sneeze. Yeah, because if he learned about that, that would make him so yeah, sad. Yeah, can you I'm imagine assuming. someone was dating you and they're like, oh, I just don't feel bad, so I'm going to stay. It's like, bitch, dump me then. Like, I want to meet someone who doesn't feel bad being with me. Not like oh, attacking yeah. you, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I but, mean, yeah, I guess the thing is, if you actually want to solve the problem is you might have to break up with your boyfriend. Yeah, but right? also, like, I don't want to be responsible for breaking up this teenage romance. I know. And then what if, like... I'm just assuming it's teenager because she said she didn't have a driver's license. For some reason, I was pitching, like, she's in her 20s and doesn't have a driver's license. Oh, like, but, she has been dating this guy for three years. Yeah, so if she's a teenager, you're one of those, like, people that, like, started dating in middle school then. I don't know. But then you watch those romantic comedy movies where... It, it's this exact same situation, and and one of them's like, whatever, I'm going to be single. But then at the end of the movie, they realize that their other boyfriend was the true love. Yeah, but at the end oh! of the day, with stuff like that, is stuff like that supposed to happen then? Like, in the grand scheme of thing, in those movies, if they didn't break up with their current boyfriend, they would always feel like, oh, oh I'm not yeah. actually supposed to be with him. You so, might need a break. Yeah, so at the end of the day, like, it kind of might be a thing where, like, like, what if five years from now, you might still be with this boyfriend, but you might... And maybe he'd be down to date you in five years, but it might just be a thing where both of you guys need to separate. Full yeah, day. like you should just, you should just, maybe, yeah, you should just break up with him and be like, I just don't know. Like, I want to just try dating other people. And then who knows? Maybe he'll be like, F you and never want to talk to you then. Or maybe you'll end up realizing he was the one and you should get back with him and get married at 17. Yeah. Real quick, we want to talk about this podcast sponsor, Warby Parker. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. 
sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses are also available. Back in um, November, December, I got a pair of Wobby Poco glasses. This is my second pair. And I got the Baker. And I absolutely love them. Whenever I wear glasses, I wear these. And I feel like they fit my face really good. I did the home try and kit, so I got five pairs. I picked actually two of my favorites. This is one of them. And, um... And I love them. Yeah, Warby Parker is great. We've both been wearing Warby Parker way before we were sponsored by them for the podcast. That's we're not... genuine customers. And Warby Parker helps people in need. For every pair of glasses sold, they give a pair of glasses to someone in need, which is absolutely amazing. I know, I love that. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Lucas Jacob. All right, should we go to the next one? <laughs> yeah, let's read you it. can read it. When I was 18, I went to Turkey. What's Turkey? I'm joking. <laughs> to get a cheap nose job. <laughs> and I lied and said, I got it nail me because I don't want people to think I'm broke. <laughs> so I guess maybe in Turkey, there's cheap ass nose jobs. So they went to get the cheap ass nose job and then pretend they got it done in like Beverly Hills. But first, my question about this is, um, flying to Turkey is probably expensive. Yeah, so, well, maybe they're maybe this is a European. Oh yeah, so no, even, Europe isn't even near like, Turkey, but you know what I mean. Maybe taking they live a close. train there or something. Yeah, would still be. Ex but yeah, okay, that isn't the question. That isn't the question. I just I wanted to know how it went down. But I mean, <laughs> but did did it turn out good? Like I want to know. I know, like as long as the nose job's good, and also if you want to keep doing this lie, just go ahead. Plus, uh, yeah, she just, she's confessing it to us. She's not asking. Should I tell people the truth? She's like, I, this is. What I'm just gonna tell people. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think this is the bad lie. If for some reason, yeah. if for some reason Lucas told me today, oh yeah, by the way, I got liposuction. Um, and um, I got it in um like the like. Like the most Mexico. bougie place in Beverly Hills. Oh. And he told me that. I honestly wouldn't care. And then like, and then I'd just be like, oh, pop off. And then like 10 years down the line, we were drinking. And then you told me, oh, by the way, I got it done in Brazil. I just was embarrassed. I honestly wouldn't be mad. I'd just be like, oh, I like, I would be embarrassed too. Because like, I don't want to make people like be scared for me and think like, oh, I got an infection. <laughs> oh, yeah. I almost feel like if I did get lipo in Mexico, because you know, on Botched, they always, on Botched, the reality show, they always say like, don't get anything done in Mexico, even though I'm sure there is good plastic surgeons there. But yeah, they always just, but they just say like, don't go to like a discount place. But if, so if I got like some surgery in Mexico, I probably would lie to everyone and say I got it done in Beverly Hills. So I wouldn't want all the family judging me saying, oh, you, you get an infection, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I don't want to deal with that. So I would just lie and just say I got it done in Beverly Hills. Hills. But then again, you could say you're getting it done in Beverly Hills, but there's this place that is probably like like 20 minutes from Beverly Hills. I don't know how far. I just remember walking past it so many times. Do you remember that place? It was so funny. It was in this strip mall, and it had this big sign. It was somewhere where we used to live, and it said liposuction. And it just looked, <laughs> okay, maybe it was a good search, and I have no idea because places are probably expensive to learn. Yeah. But it just looks so trashy, but... It's just funny. because That like, is the funny thing is Beverly Hills is like the plastic surgery capital of America. But yeah, even just living in LA, like I, I'm sure if you grow up in LA, like, you know, the good doctors, but I feel like I always had bad dentists and like bad doctors. Like, I feel like I never could find like a good one. Like my dentist, I feel like they were always like scamming me and like telling me, oh, I have to redo all of like your fillings and stuff. And like one time they would actually like, and yeah, it was just a whole Oh, thing. I have a good dentist, Shelly. Now this doesn't but, really have to do about like, about LA, but I remember when we lived in California, somewhere in um, what is that place called? Um, that that part of California. Don't people call it like the um San Fernando Valley or something? Oh, the valley. Like the San Fernando. The San Fernando Valley. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. So like around there, we went to this dentist. I remember, and I remember I, it was like it was you weren't there because you obviously didn't live with us at that time. But it was like Lucas and Younger, except Lucas, and um. And I, I remember we were all like, this dentist place is Algos. We were all on ingredients. And the, but it was it was funny because we were all on ingredients, the kids. And then I remember our um, um, mom said, it's not gross. She was over exaggerating <laughs> because obviously she, we're going to keep going there. But the place, now who knows, but it looked like none of the tools were cleaned. And <laughs> it was just gross. Like, like that compared to the one we were getting in Nebraska was like, it was like, this is I gross. Know, but I, I'm not saying every dentist is like that in California, but that one was just like, what are you doing? I know I have to know if any of the bros live in LA, have lived there their whole life. Is that how it is? I don't know. Maybe it's because it did always seem like everything was sketchy there, like with medical. 
May I I don't know. Like I feel like the dentist, like yeah, that was just I don't know. I it just yeah, always had like a bad vibe. I mean, number one, I was so grossed out when he put those things in my mouth because I remember I was convinced they weren't clean. Because they just <laughs> look dirty. I remember even the eye doctor. Like, my eye doctor was so good, but like the building was almost just so run down. I remember thinking like it was so dusty, and then like I'm taking they're like dealing with my eyes, and I'm like, but then, I like, guess isn't it probably a thing where like. Stuff is more expensive there, so they can't like like yeah. always like get an office and then renovate it. Because then be like so in expensive. the Nebraska eye doctor, it's like everything's marble, like all these new fancy technological things. Like they Nebraska's, bring you a limo. Nebraska's <laughs> where it's at, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trying to convince people it's better than California. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, it's so it's like it's so sunny all the time. But I do have to say, when I when I went to the eye doctor a few months ago in, in Nebraska, I was shocked because there was a marble front desk. I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this is where I belong. Yeah, I think the bougiest place is the um. Is the um is the place where you get like your skincare? Um, the, oh, um, dermatologist. Oh, it's a giant building, high ceiling. They pick you up in the limousine. Um, cool sculpt thing. Get some fat sucked out. I do that every week. Can I haven't done that? Yet. I remember a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I don't know which one was brought up, but we wanted to do it to see what would happen. Oh, I still like. I always want to convince Jacob to do things for his video, so it doesn't feel like we're actually doing it. So I'm like, can you please do a video where we get cool sculpting? Because like then I have an excuse to get it, you know. For some reason, okay. So so I can was, we? <laughs> no, I. It just I, like so I don't. So the thing about it is like if I did do it, I would. I feel like ninety percent of my mind would just be like, I'm doing this as a joke. I know that's what I want. I don't want to get it on a real life, and then also maybe we can get it for free if you put it in a video. Oh, that is funny because like <laughs> because it sounds funny like getting liposuction in Mexico, but if I filmed it, I don't know why, but in my brain it feels fake. I know, like it's like <laughs> I'm just doing it like for the video, so it's fine. Yeah, it's like oh, this isn't the actual me, guys. It's just <laughs> another me. <laughs> no, that cool sculpting. It's it's just like a thing at dermatologists, and it's not even you don't even get. And it's, it's just not even invasive. All they do is, like, you put your stomach in something and it apparently freezes the fat cells. I don't even know if it's real. Doesn't it hurt really bad? I don't know. I also know it's, like, expensive. It is? I think it's, like, 2000 a session or something. Are you joking? Yeah. If I'm doing a video on that, I better get it free. I know. So if you still want to do <laughs> that. That'd be, can you imagine it? Like, bros get liposuction together. Like, that'd be the perfect title. That, wait, should I actually email them? Yeah, we should get them for that'd free. That'd be funny. And I then also they have those now. machines where, like, they give you abs. Like, somehow, like, they... They, they, like, make your abs work out so much that you get abs. But no, you, don't, but you just then, lay there, though. But then the downfall of this idea is, what if we both get it and, like, we both have intense bodybuilder abs? And then it's like, well, shit, now every month I have to drop two grand on this. Oh, yeah. Maybe they give us a deal, like, every two months you do another video. <laughs> About 50. <laughs> <laughs> but... I do want to know, like, I've mentioned this in a previous podcast, if Jake has fake abs. Because people actually think that. Oh, right, maybe. But I just don't believe it. I mean, isn't he? He's so rich. He probably just has one of those machines in his house while he's watching TV. It works out his abs. I just, I don't know. There's even one I, for butts now. I saw Whitney Cummings do it. Or like, it squeezes your butt so many times. And then if it's like, you, she said it's like you did a thousand squats or something. For real? I swear, like in the future, gyms are just going to be you lay in a chair, turn on a TV show, and these machines work you out. No, okay. So, so as funny as that is, we all have to admit, like, when you out and working out, there is like endorphins. So if I though, oh, if yeah. that was a thing, I feel like they should somehow release the endorphins too. Oh yeah, we were me and Jacob were randomly talking about the other day, like if we were billionaires, and I said I wouldn't work out anymore, and I would just have a hypnotist <laughs> hypnotize me to work out. So then like I would go to bed for the workouts because I'd be hypnotized, you know? Oh yeah, like um um, and then you do like a full on three hour session, yeah. so you don't have to. That'd be, um, if that actually was a thing where you would go under, like you wouldn't remember it, but you'd still be awake, I would probably do that. Like you never have to remember how hard the workouts were. So I've never been hypnotized. Like, so have you ever been to like prom or something and they hypnotized you? Yeah, on home prom, like um, they did that. Did it fail school. real or like did you not go deep Well, I wasn't enough? picked. Oh, uh, because I, I, like, I actually want to try to get hypnotized, but because I've never, because is it a thing where like, like 50% of you is like, like, like low-key doing it just as a joke. Oh, and then yeah. you, you kind of believe it, but then it's like, oh, I'm doing this just so everyone around me is having fun. I know, because no, I had a friend who got hypnotized and she told me after she faked the whole thing. For real? Yeah, she was like, oh, like, obviously I was in front of the whole school. I'm just going to go along with what the guy's saying. I'm not going to make it awkward. Yeah. So she, she faked the entire thing. I mean, 
Plus, if there's an audience around you, I feel like it'd be more hard to get hypnotized. Again, it's like, also, you're in front of everyone. Like, you're just going to go along with it. Plus, if hypnotism hypnotism is real, if that's a word, I'm actually scared because what if you want to whack one day and someone went in front of you? TikTok and then put you in the van. <laughs> oh, no. That's how you know hypnosis isn't real. Yep. Yeah, I feel like kidnappers would be using I it know, to kidnap I know. That'd be people. the number one tactic. Yeah, you'd just be on a walk and all of a sudden it's like, fall asleep. Count down from five. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would be asleep and wake up in the van. That'd be so scary. Like, like if you're on a walk, you, I could see like a... No, this would be... This is terrifying. But if you always <laughs> had to wear air phones outside because of people saying, tick, tick, tick. <laughs> oh my God. If there ever is a Twitter headline, hypnosis kidnappers are taking over like New Jersey or something, I am leaving. No, that's scary. Okay. I mean, yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, uh, it was just a mini story time, but I don't want to bring it up, actually. <laughs> okay, go to time. our Patreon to go to that, get the exclusive <laughs> story time. Um, Next confession. It's a really short one. A few months ago, I ate my brother's goldfish an hour after he won it at the carnival. Um. Okay, like, do you think this is real? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not saying you guys are liars, but it just sounds <gasps> like something out of a movie. Uh, there was multiple ones about killing fish. I mean, okay. I'm going to say it's real because it, if you were eating a goldfish, okay, I, I'm not planning on eating goldfish, but it wouldn't even be gross. Oh, yeah. It's just like a little time. Like, we already eat fish all day, every day, so. But a super common theme in these confessions from the bro show community was like revenge on a sibling. Like, for this example, the brother won a goldfish at a carnival, so they ate the goldfish to ruin the sibling's happiness. Oh. And then there was this other one that, I'll just go to it, this other I fish one. I believe it then. That, they said, sense. growing up, Whenever my little sister was annoying to me and made me mad, um, I would put an ice cube in her fishbowl before school. It would be cold enough to kill the fish by the afternoon, and the ice cube would be melted by the time everyone got home, so no one would know it was him that did it. Oh, my gosh. And so she said wait, they, this she, happened multiple times? He, they did it four times because the parents kept getting her a new fish. I mean, okay— I actually don't <laughs> think you're a bad person because I've heard like a bunch of stories of like kids doing messed up shit. Oh, but that, yeah. Because you mean, were like 11, I'm guessing. At the same time, it's like, what the fuck? I though? mean, all this come... I never killed a sibling's fit animal, but I did throw away my older sister's Lion King Simba stuffed animal. Because I was just... I didn't, wasn't even in a fight with her, I don't think. But and when I was almost like I was like possession. four years old. I know I wasn't even in preschool yet. So I was like four. And I remember I got her Simba stuffed animal and gave it to the trash man. And he said, wait, you want to throw this away? And I said, yeah, we don't want it anymore. So he brought it. He didn't even throw it away. He said, oh, I'll just like give it to my kid, I guess. Because he, he just brought it up to like, you know, the front with him. Yeah. But yeah. And then I admitted to my sister and she still, she still like is mad at me about it. I swear when you're a little kid, like, um, I've wondered this before, but where, do, where does all like that angle and stuff go? Because I swear, <laughs> I remember being a kid and doing stuff just to angle people. And I remember being so happy. But some people, it doesn't go away when they're adults. Oh, and they're just assholes Like there's still. some people, like if you cross them, like they caught up your tires, you know? Key your oh, car. Oh, well, that's true. Like that's why sometimes I am scared driving. Because like what if I accidentally like, like I don't hit anyone, but what if I actually switch lanes and like, and you're mad for some reason. Oh, yeah. And then you like, bang up every, bang up the whole car and stuff. Yeah. And you go into a TJ Maxx and you go outside and it's like, oh, shit. Or also you see those headlines every now and then. Like someone didn't get the proper amount of sauce packets at the drive-thru. So they come back and sh like shoot up the place. It's like, what? I don't know. It's people like, need, like. People need to like go to therapy. And I'm not even joking. I know, it's like, please fun. just like let out your emotions. Like listen to a Lana Del Rey album and cry in your car because like. Those emotions are making you do scary things. Yeah, and I know like therapy can be expensive, but those yeah, like you said, that's free. Like, yeah, that's literally cry. free. Just punching, ball your eyes out. Punching a bag is free. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, um, next up, I had a best friend for many years, but unfortunately, we fell out for a plethora of reasons. Well, about a year ago, I ran into her ex boyfriend at the clubs. Him and I were good friends while they were dating, so of course we wanted to hang out. Long story short, we ended up at a hotel room doing <laughs> cocaine and banging. I feel really bad because she and I have recently reconnected. I don't know if I should tell her about that night. Oh, okay, so she banged her best friend's ex and did cocaine with him. So, in my mind, they weren't dating. Yeah, and also you fell out with a friend. So it's not like you owed her anything. Like, oh, I can't hook up and do drugs with her ex-boyfriend, you know? Sorry, I just sneezed. Oh, uh, Jacob has COVID. No, um, I have like a mild cold. Oh yeah, we're both vaxxed. But um, but yeah, um, with this one, I I feel like even if you did tell her about it, not that you have to tell her about it, but I feel like she 
At least I don't think she has a right to be that mad. I honestly feel like you shouldn't tell her. You guys weren't friends at the time. She's not dating the guy anymore. Really? Why would she ever need to know that? You know what I mean? Yeah. You I weren't mean, friends with her at the time. You banged him and did coke. Plus you on a, a substance. So like it's not your fault. I'm joking. <laughs> that if I'm not trying to promote that way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next up. Last year, I spent 246 hours, roughly about 10 days out together, listening to the bro show. Okay. Go off, queen. Okay. Like, I, that's, like, amazing to me. It seems like, from the emails, it seems like most of the listeners or watchers watch it when they go to sleep or listen when they go to sleep. We get so many emails saying that. And I remember at first I was like, that's, like I thought it was funny because I was like, oh, you guys actually don't like it. That's funny. Oh, yeah. But then it turns out they actually do like it. <laughs> I used to always listen to podcasts in the shower. So there's probably someone showering right now listening. What's your Keep hack scrubbing. doing that, though? Keep scrubbing in the shower. How can you hear it over the waddle? Oh, um, I used to have a speaker. I'd, I'd like bring a Bluetooth speaker into the bathroom. I used to have it because don't you still do that? You still listen to music while showering. Oh, yeah. So, but it's annoying because, but yeah, like... Bringing that back, I mean, before, and we all lived in a house together in Columbus. I remember, like, so funny. Like, that one, like, it just funny me because it, it seems so ancient. Remember when, when iPhones had that old cable, like a USB? <laughs> yeah. Or, like, that one that was a big rectangle and putting it into, do you remember that? The iHome. Yeah, and it would <laughs> blare on the side. That's so funny. You remember blaring music all the time when I showered? I need to get back into that. I remember me, our sister, and our little brother would sometimes listen to Pixie Lot to go to bed or other music. <laughs> oh, listening it to go to bed? Yeah, it's so weird. Like, how were we listening to, like, Pixie Lot while trying to go to bed? Like, oh, my how? God. Stream Pixie Lot, guys. <laughs> um, Next up. When my sister turned eight years old, she got her first phone for her birthday. I was five and a half at the time. It was one of those flip phones, and it was purple. I was so jealous, so I decided to hide it. I hid it in my dad's rain boot, and somehow I forgot about it until my dad found it when he was putting on the rain boots a half a year later. During this whole half a year, my parents blamed my sister for losing the phone, but they did give her a new phone. <laughs> oh, God. See, this is another, like, you're jealous of a sibling, so you just ruin their shit. This I know. Just, this, is, this is a common thing. Yeah, like, people just get angry at their siblings because obviously it just kind of goes back to the roommate thing. In a way... Like, obviously, since you live here with your siblings, it's kind of like, like, it makes sense that people get annoyed with their roommates because it's the same thing as getting, when you're a kid, being annoying to your siblings. Oh, also, yeah, you're just like, she got an effing phone? Like, F that and hide the, hide the phone. Yeah. And then watch her for a whole half a year get yelled at by the parents for losing the phone and don't ever speak up. That's dedication, though. I feel like hiding, like, I could hide it for a day, but I feel like I would, I would just have to tell someone. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, the next one. I once peeked into the keyhole of my sister's room. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? And saw her boyfriend fingering her. Okay, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Traumatizing. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think it's like... I, I would be... I would kind of want to do what you did. Like, like I don't mean like when oh, I like see spy. that, but... Yeah, I miss... I, when I... Like, I just love spying on people, so... I mean, but now you're just trying, and then I feel bad. Then you learn the lesson, don't spy on people, because you might see something like that, which you never wanted to see. Yeah. Like, I remember one time, me and one of our other siblings, we, our sister was with her boyfriend. This isn't anything about, like, fingering, but um, our sister was in the basement with her boyfriend watching a movie, and we thought it would be funny to hide behind the couch and just listen to what they were talking about. But then it was so awkward, because they ended up, like, telling each other they loved each other for the first time, and it was, like, <laughs> this really emotional moment, and I was like, this is, how can we leave? I'm like, I don't want to be here anymore. Oh, yeah, that just sounds uncomfortable. Like, I was hoping to just hear some tea, but, like, then it gets to... Of hearing this intimate <laughs> moment and like, I didn't want this. I didn't want to exp like this isn't what I was hoping for, you know? How did we kinda want there to be a Bravo reality show about like twelve year olds? Because <laughs> stuff like that doesn't happen in real housewives because they you just have a different level of like your brain and you're oh, more mature, yeah. but like hiding behind couches to listen to people. I know it's like you are a creep. I remember listening back when like everyone used the house phone, I would pick up like the house phone in the kitchen and just like listen to my our sisters, when they were on the phone with their friends, like our older sisters. Oh, yeah, and just hear what they're just talking about. Just like, like, act like I was kind of in the convo, but just never talking. <laughs> <laughs> but with the keyhole thing, I've never, I feel like it, it must be like an older house because I've never been. I know, like a keyhole big enough to see everything. I thought that only happened in the movies, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Your house is a movie house. Okay, the next one. When I was like 10, I used to see these ads for sex talk lines for phones. 
Yeah, this was back when cordless phones were a thing. And I don't know why, but I got bored and decided to waste my time by calling these hotlines. And one time I had like an hour conversation with some grown-ass man that believed me when I told him I was 18. Oh my gosh. At first I thought you were going to say <laughs> that you somehow got a job for working there. And I was oh, like, you were literally what? 10? And I was like, what? But this is as weird to be honest. We're probably around the same age, the person who wrote this, because I remember also when I was around like 10, 12, all the time on TV, there was commercials for sex phone lines. Do you remember that? Um, no, I, I, like, like, um, I, like, heard about sex phone lines. It was I always don't... a commercial, like, after, like, 10 p.m., there'd always be all these commercials, like, these girls laying on beds being like, call me, like, I'm bored. Just call so, the phone number below. So has sex phone lines kind of turned into cam goals, I'm guessing? Because if you would do that, then you'd probably join cam goals. Yeah, maybe there, there aren't commercials for them. Oh, yeah, I guess it just is more. But maybe there are commercials. No one, no one watches commercials anymore. So maybe they're, they're still, are there still late night weird commercials like that? Because there also used to be commercials for Girls Gone Wild. Oh, if you, okay, I haven't done this in a while, like in years and years. But yeah, like you're, how you're saying, if you watch random stations on TV or whatever you call them at like 2 a.m. or 4 a.m., yeah. there's some weird ass commercials that are just like people, these, this company is paying them to promote Oh, it's yeah. So weird. They're also, yeah, there's, just, and also sometimes on the guide, it would just say paid programming and be a whole 30 minutes of just commercials. Oh, yeah, that's so weird because it's like, who's going to want to click it? I know it. Somehow people must have because they paid the money. Yeah. Okay, this next one's long. About a year ago, I was on vacation for a week with my family. My boyfriend was at home, so I wanted to send him some spicy nudes while I was gone. I was taking pics and videos in the shower of my hotel. I took a video of my blank on Snapchat. I like how she bleeped it. She bleeped it. I like that. We know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. So I took a video of my blank on Snapchat. Um, There was a lot of water droplets on my screen and my hands were wet. Right as I was about to hit send, a water droplet must have bounced right where the add to my story button was. I didn't even notice because when you send a snap, it brings you right back to the camera. A couple minutes later, one of my friends texted me freaking out and was like, what the F is on your story, bitch ass hoe? At that moment, I just knew. I puked from anxiety, and I immediately threw up in the shower. I went to my snap and saw five people have viewed my story, and I didn't even look at who it was. I just deleted it while my hands were shaking so effing hard. I sobbed my eyes up to my boyfriend on the phone, and I couldn't even leave the bathroom because my mom would have asked me what was wrong, and I didn't want to tell her. Now in every social situation, I still wonder if one of those five people are lurking around me. Like, who was it? My Catholic-ass aunt or my boyfriend's dad? Oh my god. That is like everyone's worst nightmare. Like even just like with anything, like accidentally adding something to a story, you know? Yeah, that's why like if I if I like ever turn into like um if I ever like get to the fame of like Jennifer Lopez or something and one of my nudes leak, it isn't me. Cause I I just would never take a nude. Like it, <laughs> it's weight like this stuff is like anxiety inducing. I know. Like and who were the five people? Like, they didn't even... The weird thing to me is that five people saw it and they didn't even message you or anything. They just thought, like, it's normal that she's doing a porn video on her Snapchat. I know. Like, I, you would think that five people, like, that's a lot of people. Like, I feel like one of them would message you and say, like, goalie, like, did you accidentally... Is this an accident <laughs> or what? Are you promoting, like, your OnlyFans or something? Yeah, I guess these days you never know. Like, anyone could just all of a sudden just decide to start an OnlyFans. They're probably just like, oh, okay, I guess this is our new hustle. If I'm being honest, like, if I was looking at Instagram stories, Twitter, Instagram, if, if any, or Snapchat, if anyone posted a nude that I, like, knew in real life, I honestly, like you said, I wouldn't be that surprised because I feel like, I feel like there's so many people that, like, just don't really view anything of it. So it's kind of like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like, like, sex is just so, like... It's different now. It's different than it used yeah, to be. Yeah, maybe they were just really excited. Like, go her for starting an empire and OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. They were ready to, like, sign up. <laughs> okay, um, the next one. All of my sugar daddies think I'm just seeing them. Naive bitches. Okay. Now let's get into it. P.S., no, I'm not trolling. I love how you're giving a PS because sometimes I think. And then we always we always claim people are making up their stories when they say they have a sugar daddy. <laughs> sugar babies exist. They don't go around telling everyone what they do. I make thousands of dollars a month this way. Go off. And I don't care what anyone says. I paid off this year's student loans doing this. I mean, that that um makes me super happy that like you're using this money for student loans like like I, like, I don't give a F if someone's using their sugar daddy money to buy, like, YSL bags. It's like, pop off, do you? But paying off your student loans, like, you, you, you're you going to college for, like, 
I don't know. But then you also have like this hustle, like two oh, hustles yeah. at a time. That's a lot. And yeah, just see all the sugar daddies. They don't need to know that you're seeing other ones. Go off. I know. I mean, go off, I'm, bestie. I'm just happy for you. <laughs> okay, next one. I'm 28 and I haven't kissed anyone yet or been any kind of intimate. I'm a lesbian and at first I was too scared to come out. Now I'm too scared to be an active lesbian, LOL. My social skills suck and every year that passes, I feel more and more pressure to do this stuff. I really don't like to be touched or anything else unless I feel safe and at ease with the person. And I think that's part of the problem. Sometimes I feel like I should just do it because everyone else has, but deep down, I know that's not the answer. I really want to know your opinion and the rest of the bros. Maybe I'm not alone in this one. Oh, you definitely aren't alone. There's probably... Who even cares what your age is and where you're at with, you know what I mean, your sexual journey? It doesn't even have... There's no age where... It doesn't have to be like a movie where you have to lose it at a certain time. Oh, or yeah. Just because like, everyone else does it around another time of their life it doesn't mean you have to. If you're hanging out with someone and you're like, I kind of like them... And you guys are on a date and you're like, oh, yeah, but like I basically have to have sex with them because like I want because it's like I'm getting older and like I, ha I have to be like everyone else. Yeah, like, it's like at the end of the day, you should just follow what your heart wants. If you like because in my scenario that I'm explaining like this fake scenario, you shouldn't have sex with them because it feels like you're just forcing yourself. Like, oh, you should just, yeah, you like should only do it if you said, want to. Yeah, if you, if you want to get to know someone and then have sex with them, you don't. You know, like, just do it. And then there's also people that just, like, meet someone and they're like, let's bang. And then those people are cool. You're cool. Yeah, just don't. There's literally no rush. I mean, I understand why you feel like, oh, my God, it's been so long. But just try to just drop that and be like, who cares? Like, you're on your own timeline. It's not about the race. It's the marathon. As Nicki yep. Minaj said in Mar Megatron. Yep. Stream her new mixtape. It's not her new mixtape. It's from 2009, but it's now on streaming service. It's called Beam Me Up Scotty. I was refreshing on Instagram for a full 40 minutes. I know. I watched her Instagram live last night. We're recording this on Friday. She went live on Instagram to announce it. Yeah. I mean, I did think it was going to be like, um, I, I, I thought it was going to be like the introduction to an album. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I feel like it's coming soon though. Like I don't even want to try to brag, but I did listen to the mixtape like years ago, but... So oh, you not knew about, like, Iggy Bitty Piggy. I didn't listen to it in 2009. I think I listened to it in, like, 2014, so I was still pretty late. Oh, uh, well, okay, so I'm glad that she released it on streaming services because about, like, six months ago, I downloaded um, Kill the DJ. Oh, that's like, so good. Like, on, you know it's on YouTube and then MP3 and then connect it to your phone, all that shit. But now I can just listen to it actually on streaming services, which is cool. If you want to know my favorite songs with a mixtape, Kill the DJ, obviously Itty Bitty Piggy, and um, Can Anybody Hear Me? If you want an emotional moment. Oh, I haven't. I I, I actually have to listen because I don't know that much about it. Except Itty Bitty Piggy and Kill the DJ. Oh, yeah. that She's sponsoring this podcast. So go stream it. Was it two mixtapes or one? I think there was more than that. Just that one. Oh, I like that was the, the most ones. popular one. And then she had like more like OG fans would remember that Yeah, ones. I think. I'm not really sure though. Okay. Um, I was out clubbing one night and I was flirting with this hot man so hard. He was there with his slightly less hot best friend. I definitely I ha thought I had him wrapped around my finger and we were talking for so long about so many things. I thought the slightly lot less hot best friend was feeling left out. So I decided to make some small talk with him too for a minute. So I asked him if they had been friends for a long time and he told me that's my boyfriend. I was like, I'm so sorry. I swear I didn't know he was taken. He was laughing so hard and was like, I don't really care. I actually really liked watching all this happen. And then the three of us hung out all night and I had a great time, but I was still bummed it didn't turn into a threesome. That's a great story. We're just finding out you're flirting with a taken gay. Yeah, I feel like I could see that happening a lot. Oh, yeah. Don't, wait, I guess that's kind of an old thing to say. What are you going to say? I was going to say like, like I, don't, I haven't heard it recently, but I remember in 2018 or something, this was the it viral tweet tweet saying damn okay so like so like it's just like straight girl tweeting this damn it seems like it seems like all the um it seems like all the um it seems like all like the um handsome boys are taken and then they're like oh but all the hot boys are gay you know like that's a kind of a trend <laughs> oh Not yeah really i remember, anymore, but I remember saying, that always being a thing yeah saying like say it's a straight girl saying Oh, it sucks that I can't date anyone hot because they're all gay. Oh, That's, like, yeah. The but yeah, I haven't seen that recently. I feel like it's kind of over, like, the whole gay bust fun thing. That's kind of, like, you know, it's kind of in that realm, like, just annoying, kind of, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, next one. Hey, bestie, here's my confession. Oh, actually, this one. Oh, 
Sorry. When I was little, I had a period of time. He had a period. I had a period of time <laughs> when I just wouldn't go to the bathroom to poop, even when I was at home. It was mostly out of laziness. I didn't want to stop playing. <laughs> even every summer, me and my family went to our countryside <gasps> house. I would play with my friends who were also my second or third cousins all day, and I'd shit myself every day. <laughs> One day we were in my cousin's house. We were playing in in the living room when I felt warm poop on my butt cheeks. I don't know if I... Okay, I'll just continue. Ew. But it didn't bother me. <laughs> Her mother called me to the kitchen to help me with the cake and snacks, and I was alone for a brief moment. So I sat on every piece of furniture they had and then smelled the furniture <laughs> they smelled. <laughs> then I ate hella strawberry cake and went home like nothing was wrong. They had a dog, so I think he took the blame for the sm- for the smell. Still to this day, I can't explain why I did that, but it's still an ongoing joke in my family. <laughs> okay, I literally poop started. girl. That's okay. literal poop girl. You were like a little kid, so like I get it, but like. Oh my gosh, having poop on your butt cheeks actually, it makes me want to just know, like, in a butt. diaper rash, central. Also, just like the fact that I would picture someone literally shat their pants, like it would be such an overwhelming smell. Like everyone would be like, okay, like we have to investigate, like what's going on. Like you were just, how did no one know? Like, and then sitting on the furniture? Yeah, I mean, what the? Yeah, and then like Lucas said, how didn't you get diaper rash? How didn't you? Like, <laughs> How was it your ass bleeding after this? That's so funny, just out of laziness, too. Like, she said, like, I just simply just was lazy, so I decided to shit myself. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I get it, though. Like, when I was a kid, like, I would always rush to go pee and all that shit. Oh, yeah, like, it would suck if you had to go to the bathroom at the water park because you're like, I don't want to take up any time. Like, I could be playing. Oh, yeah, and it's like, what if I miss the funnest thing of the day? Oh, yeah. So, we've all been there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Hey, bestie. Here's my confession. So my mom gets a plastic surgery every two months. Oh, every year (laughs) she gets plastic surgery. Two months ago, she got a BBL. And I am jealous every time I see her. I want to beat her up. What do I do? I don't know. I'm 19, transgender, and I usually get my lips done because I'm poor. But I want big boobs like the cock destroyers. Also, what's your thought on them breaking up? Cave, bye besties. Finally, I was waiting for someone to ask me this, whether it be on this podcast, on Instagram, or what. But yeah, the um, the cock destroyers. So give a little bit of backstory on them if people don't know. Oh uh, yeah, so they're like these. Uh, th- so if you've been on Twitter, there's this there's this video that people always post on Sunday of one of them saying it's effing Sunday. <laughs> it's them so mad. They have such big boobs, and they're just porn people right yeah should i play like a little um this has 1.3 million views on youtube and it's just called the cock destroyers this is just like what you if you don't know who they are like this is sort of the vibe and picture really big lips and really big boobs oh. hi guys mm, look at these lovely big tits do you know what we are <laughs> we're fucking cock destroyers aren't we babe cock fucking destroyers, yeah, fucking <laughs> cock destroyers. <laughs> we love to just get your dick and fucking okay you guys get it but okay, no. I didn't know they broke up. Like I remember briefly hearing about it. These two best friends, the cock destroyer, big boob girls, broke up. No, this is so. When I saw it like two weeks ago, I thought it was just like a a day phase. Like they because one of them got a new boyfriend and the boyfriend kidding? wasn't okay with it. That that's what I hate about these guys. They always break up iconic girl friendships. I know, literally, daddy gang, it literally cock happens destroyers all the time. Yeah, like I there's probably way more examples, but. The, if people start dating people and then they change everything about themselves. I know. And they start being like, oh, I guess I can't say how much I'm a cock destroyer anymore because I have a boyfriend. It's like, okay, well, don't date him then if he doesn't accept that. Like, shouldn't he know it's a persona online? Like, yeah. boom, grow up. Plus, it's so funny. Like, watching that video, is so. it's so funny how they enunciate it so much. <laughs> Every single syllable. On the British accent, just like all of it adds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, honestly, I haven't watched that much of them because, like, I... Obviously, I'm not gonna watch the porn because I'm not really into that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not into that straight up. But um, yeah. I mean, I want to learn I'm more sad. about the breakup. Like, what went down? All I know is that one of them got a boyfriend, and now they're in a fight. Like, really? You're gonna let a guy break you up? It's like find another guy. Yeah, and like this is like this. This isn't some like isn't like one. You're losing one of your funds. It's like this is a business. You guys I are no. Don't let the cock destroyers die. Anyway, next up. Oh wait, so. Oh, you're just mad that you can't get plastic surgery. I mean... Oh, yeah, just a confession. Yeah, I mean... 
I wish you the best. Tell your mom to pay for yours next year and not get herself. You might have to beat up your mom because you might be so jealous of her. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, when I was 12, my friend had a really spiritual mom and we stole her witchcraft stuff at like 4 a.m. to put bad luck on something or something on this girl we hated. We thought it didn't work and it was a joke, but the next week the girl got in a car accident and broke her leg. LMAO. Oh my god. So you you just literally you literally did a, a curse on someone. Yeah, and the thing about it is that like it sounds all crazy saying that it was a curse, but at the same time it's like what the like how does that work? You broke then? their leg. Yeah, you physically did that. All right. Go off clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um I always make up dramatic excuses whenever I don't respond to people like Oh, I'm so sorry. I've just been so busy. My family is going through a lot. <laughs> when in reality, I just don't want to talk to them. Okay. No. Okay. When okay. When other pe- whenever I make a- up excuses, which I will, like, I only do it, like, it doesn't happen that much. But, like, my excuses are never like this. It's always something simple, like, oh, I'm hanging out with family. But, okay, this gives me so much insight. I've always wondered when people say, like, oh, my family is going through a lot. And, like, I'm so busy, which, like, obviously, like, those are valid points. But I always wonder if they're lying. But it's funny that this oh, yeah. person like, is kind of lying. I feel like I used to go through a stage where I'd also do like elaborate excuses for I don't want to hang out with people. But then I realized I'm just going to, I started just telling people I didn't want to. You know what I mean? Yeah, because what I realized, because I used to think, what if I tell them this excuse and then they find out I'm lying? But I, I feel like it's a thing where it's like, at the end of the day, if, if it's like your actual friend or something, like, if you don't want to hang out, they should just accept it. Yeah, and then you could just, you should literally just be honest and say, I just don't feel like it today. Like, we should plan another time, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, like, uh, they just will know the true you rather than saying, like, my family is going through a hard time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because then, like, what if they ask you about it and you don't have anything to say? Oh, yeah. Next up, I kind of hate all my friends, but I still hang out with them because I don't want to be lonely. Like, they're nice people, but I don't like them. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're just, um, <laughs> One of those people that just doesn't need friends, which isn't even Oh, weird. yeah. Maybe. I'm just. Uh, oh, you're just going through a weird phase. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe knows? it's just going through a phase where you hate everyone, but like eventually you'll be like, oh, these are good friends. Or maybe you actually will always hate them and you just haven't found a good friend group. Yeah. Or you just meant to like be a homebody. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> my confession is that I hate my extended family, but they have no idea. They actually think we have a really good relationship and invite me to their houses and stuff. But I always dread going because I'm ignored and treated like a baby. I'm 20. Also, they constantly talk about my future marriage and stuff. It's an Indian thing. And I'm bisexual as fuck. So there's a high chance I'm I'm, ma- I'm going to marry a woman. They are very homophobic. So there's no way they would even talk about me marrying a woman. Um, I'm just completely different person around them. And they genuinely think we are close. And they know my. they don't know my real personality. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, this is a crazy confession because you're basically putting on, like, a whole um, other, like, Having to go along, yeah, having to go along with these fake things, being like, oh, yeah, like, the marriage uh, with my, with a guy when, like, really, you know, like, you might marry a girl, you know? Yeah, so, I wonder if you've told them that you're bisexual or not. No, she said that she hasn't because she says they're homophobic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, that sucks. Yeah, I mean... I guess maybe you just stop hanging out with them over time. Oh, yeah. I mean, she didn't ask. just a confession. I like how we're giving everyone advice, even though... I there's... know. Literally, that's why I keep thinking. I'm like, why but am yeah, I giving advice? But that sucks. Wowza. <laughs> okay, this is on a whole different <laughs> vibe. But yeah, we wish you all the best. And yeah, hopefully they'll eventually come around. You know what I mean? And maybe, oh, you, maybe yeah. you think they'll be homophobic, but they actually won't. You know what I mean? That's always a possibility. Yeah, I just started laughing because the next one. Okay, the next one literally right underneath is, um, so I eat my own cum. I don't know why I do that, but yeah, smiley face. <laughs> the smiley face at the end really adds. <laughs> um, so I eat my own cum. I don't know why I do that, but yeah, smiley face. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> just like I picture like their mouth just full of cum, like but yeah. <laughs> I just picture the cock destroyers saying this. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Go off, you know. Just if it makes you happy and it's not causing any problems. Yeah, pop off. Um, let's see. 
Oh, when I was in middle school, I was obsessed with this show, Ghost Whisperer, and managed to convince my friends that I could see and speak to ghosts. I even pretended to speak to my friend's grandma shortly after she died because she begged me to. She sat in my room crying while I pretended her grandma was in the room with us talking to me. I ended up moving schools for other reasons, but I was kind of glad because my whole Ghost Whisperer thing was getting out of hand, and I didn't know how I was going to come clean, but in the end, I never had to. Oh, oh my God, my when, a, when a lie gets to that level where you're helping someone grieve over their recently dead grandma. Yeah, and you're, the whole time, it's a lie. I know, but you're going along with it. This makes me think, like, how are these psychic and medium people just lying too, and they just they just are down to lie to all these people? I, I kind of think so. I, it, might, it might be a mix. It's probably a mix. I'm yeah, guessing. but I feel like a lot of them are lying, and even though they know they're lying, they, can, they justify it by being like, oh, I'm still helping them grieve, and like I'm helping them through the process of dealing with a lost one, you know? Oh, yeah. This is so awkward because it's like now you realize like, oh. It was I so know. Cheesy. Luckily, yeah, she, she got to move school, so she didn't even have to ever come <laughs> clean, but you know? You were in middle school. You can find the funniness in it, yeah. you know? Um, wait. Another one about you dating someone? Oh, yeah. Last week, I had a dream that Lucas and I were dating, and he was the perfect boyfriend who treated me like a queen. And somehow a love triangle formed with Jacob as well. So picture Twilight, but better. There was so much tension, and I felt like I was tearing apart a perfect family, but I did kind of like it. I fell in love with both of you and didn't know who to choose, so I decided it was best to let you both go. To this day, I still feel bad and would like to formally apologize. <laughs> These dreams are in depth. I like you guys. I know, are like, like a them. full-on Twilight saga. Yeah, um, that's a lot in my brain. We like we processing. We accept your apology. Yeah, I do. The next one. I have a fantasy of being kidnapped. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you learn stuff every day. It's so weird. Like, I didn't... It was just kind of in the same realm. Like, I just didn't... I just didn't know people fantasized about this. I mean, everyone's different. Yeah, I mean, if you ever want to become a reality, like, just walk through an alley? I'm kidding. Don't actually get kidnapped. I'm sure it's one of those things where it sounds fun, but then when you are kidnapped, you're like, what? Oh, yeah. Like, if you if you actually do really want to get kidnapped, um, you could, like, once you start dating someone or something, or if you have a really good fun, you can say, like, can you pretend to kidnap me? Oh, yeah. And say, like, I'll leave my house unlocked every night, and any night you want, don't tell me when. You can just come kidnap me. Yes, yeah, so if you really fantasize about it, obviously don't actually get kidnapped because you're going to regret it. Like, if you want yeah, to do that. You'll but- be locked in the cage and be like, Fuck. Like, why I did know. I do this? But it, it, just do it the fake way. And then you kind of get joy. Uh, good luck on your journey. <laughs> um, I'm a 19-year-old male. And I started watching your podcast last April during the height of quarantine. I always kind of knew in the back of my mind I wasn't straight, might be gay. But I would just push it aside and be like, yeah, I'll deal with that another time. When I was watching your podcast and videos, it became harder and harder for me to, ten- to deny to myself that I was incredibly attracted to Jacob. And it forced me to think about some stuff and confront and deal with my not straightness. Sorry if this sounds kind of creepy, but I just wanted to thank you guys and especially Jacob for helping me realize that I'm gay. I'm not ready to tell anyone yet because I'm only just becoming comfortable with it myself, but I'll probably be ready to tell people soon. Look at Jacob just help people become gay. I should just tell... Or realize they're gay. I should pay people. Like, I should just walk around big cities and... And then since like, since like I told this, I didn't know. That how it works. I don't know why that popped in my mind. I, I made you realize like, what if like, I can just, I'm, I'll be the gay whisperer. And I, oh, like, yeah. I just feel like you might be gay. And then I just like do my little pose. And you literally just look at them and they're like, okay, like, now I realize I'm gay. I know. Like your eyes changed everything. <laughs> like you, they, they might have, like if someone has like, yeah, a hidden gay part of themselves, like you bring it out. Yeah. By the way, like it isn't creepy. I mean, like we've all had that little internet crush. Oh Yeah. It's not creepy. Yeah. Okay, the next one. I can't lie. Jacob reminds me so much of my ex. It honestly pisses me off, but I love the pod so much I can't stop watching. (laughs) But their looks and mannerisms are so similar, it's actually annoying. Okay. I wonder if, um, if your ex, like, I wonder if this is a girl saying this a guy. I wonder. uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. But yeah, I mean. I'm sorry that I remind you of your... I'm not sorry. I'm being myself. But you know, like, that sucks. Actually, if one of my podcasts I listened to reminded me of someone I didn't like, that would suck. Oh, yeah. 
Good luck. <laughs> Joe Biden is hot. He's my weird famous crush. That's it. All right. Oh, so you have like, um, I'm, I'm assuming you're like in your 30s or, or like, well, because most of our audience is like, I think like 30s, 20s, teens. So like you must like like old or mutt. Oh, yeah. Go off. I don't see it at all. But, you know, everyone has their own little taste. Yeah. Like I think Joe Biden is like for his age. Yeah, he, he looks good. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm not like, oh, my gosh, he's so I don't, you know. Yeah. He's bangable for sure, though. <laughs> um, So I have a weird, embarrassing confession. So please keep it anonymous. I do like the smell of my farts in the shower. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the narcissist in me. But yeah, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> Did you make I, this one up? Or was it real? No, this is real. Oh, for some reason, the I dig it sounds like no, a joke. No, <laughs> this was a real one that sent to our email. But I don't know what it is about just the farts in the shower. I wonder why that's only in the shower they like them. It does make me cringe because, you know, in the shower, so <laughs> if you have fun in the shower, you know how it um it gets all steamy and it's gross. That's why it makes oh, me. Oh, yeah, but makes, they like that. And it makes me go start because what if you already put soap on your body and you fart and then oh, it yeah, then soaks into your skin? Your body's just full of fart now. Yeah. It's like mean, farting and then like you're sharing the shower with other people like who you live with and like they don't know you always fart in there. Yeah. It's like fart energy all in the shower. But you know, thanks for coming forward with your confession. Um, It started out as a joke slash mild curiosity. I would go onto WikiFeed and look at pictures. Then slowly it progressed into me watching foot fetish videos. And now I'm actually into feet. It makes me feel like such a gross pervert, but I can't help it. Oh, okay, so it started out as a... Just going on wiki feet for fun, and now, like, they literally, they get their jollies from looking at toes. Which, I mean, don't oh. feel bad. I mean, other people have the fetish. I yeah, mean, I mean, I actually don't think, so it's a pull vault if you're going to Wama and looking at people's oh, sandals. Oh, yeah, if you're, like, doing I, it where people aren't willing. But if people are willingly uploading videos being, like, here's my feet smashing stuff, like, they want you to enjoy it. Plus, like, if for some reason I upload a video and I showed my feet, I mean, it's kind of like I put it on the internet. So it's, like. <laughs> I guess I'm subjecting myself to going on wicking feet. If it oh, yeah. if for some reason it ends up on wiki feet. Wow, wiki feet know. is the gateway drug to full on foot fetish lifestyle. This is so interesting to me though, because this made me think like so obviously I'm assuming there's two types of fetishes, but this probably goes with a lot of other things. Well, you know you had it and you you just popped up in your mind, like I'm attracted to feet. But then there's this type of fetish where you're introduced to it and then I don't know if you if over time you start liking it or if you or if you always liked it, but you realized. Is or maybe it, like, that's why, maybe like in the back of their mind, they knew they kind of had a foot fetish. And that's why they would look at wiki feet, quote unquote, as a joke, you know? Oh, yeah. So they just didn't want to admit it because yeah. it's such a joke online. And you obviously are kind of embarrassed of it. I like, I mean, it's because people joke about it. So it sounds oh, embarrassing. Oh, yeah. What I mean. All right. Next up. My Instagram is not who I really am. I have a lot of followers and have a completely different persona like Hannah Montana on there. But my coworker started to find my Instagram account, so I lied and said that it was my twin sister. But I'm an only child. This reminds me of being in school and people would find my YouTube channel, and then I always viewed it as, like, a different person. Oh. So, like, I couldn't say it's another person because, like, it literally is me. But, yeah, like, that's so funny because like, it kind of reminds me of, like, that. Like, it, it made it so awkward. Because maybe you're just expressing, like, a different part of your personality on Instagram. But then it's awkward because, like, your work personality is, like, nothing like that. So it's like, yay. Yeah. But now, like, they saying it's your twin sister. Like, so awkward if anyone finds out know, you don't have it, a twin. I, in these scenarios, like, I, I wish you would just be honest. But at the same time, like, I might not even be honest. Oh, yeah. So it's weird. But go off. Keep the Instagram persona going. <laughs> now, we're ending with a great one. My husband and I put $20 into Dogecoin in 2018. First of all, wow, like you guys knew about it before. I know. All this hype. And last week it what it was over six thousand dollars. So here's my advice. What this is the advice they need. I am not much of a risk taker, so I desperately want to take it out now, but my husband really doesn't want to, so we haven't. I need J Jacob psychic advice. Should we keep our money in Dogecoin? Will it keep going up? Or <laughs> will we play it safe and pull it out soon? Use your psychic energy, Jacob. Should they take it out and cash out the 6000 that came from literally $20? Or will it go up higher? Could this get to 100 k I'm not a financial advisor. But just use your psychic advice. Well, should I say what I told you a couple of days ago? Uh, what? I'll just say it. And... But honestly, I don't fully believe this. So saying it, take it, everything, take what I say with a grain of salt. Because I don't, 
even though like I don't even think that I'm a psychic, like take this with a grain of salt because I don't know if I fully <laughs> believe what I'm gonna say. I think Dogecoin is gonna peak at 84 cents in 2021. I'm not saying that after this year. It might go higher, but I think in 2021, it's going to peak at 84 cents. Yeah. But that's just my guess. Is it over 84 cents right now? I haven't checked in it in a few days. It's no, not. it's not. It hasn't oh. ever got there. Okay, so my guess is that it's going to peak. At the time of this podcast. So I'm saying like it, next year, who knows, it could peak at like $2. But I'm just saying like right now, I just feel like this year, it's gonna, the highest it's going to get is 84 cents. But but honestly, I just think um, you and your husband should talk about it. Like what if... Oh, yeah, my... Oh, no. My advice would be twenty dollars turning into six thousand. Like I would just take out the six thousand personally. But I'm like, you know what I mean? Like I, I feel like you already won so much that take out the six thousand. You don't doesn't mean you have to just you could still put some of that back into Dogecoin, but might as well take your winnings. Yeah. Well then I And then know, I think, you know, take your winnings and diversify. Maybe oh, put some in put some in another stock. Put you some in the, Apple um, Bitcoin. Into a mutual fund, you know? Yeah. Diversify your winnings and don't keep it all in one basket. I mean, I was amazed by this because the first thing I did when I saw this, um, I was like, I was doing my math and seeing like, if you put $100 in 2018, then it would be um, six times five, which is 30000 And Damn. then if, if you fully put 1000 in 2018, which is obviously a F ton of money, it would be 30 times 10, which th- 300000 Damn. So like, that's just, like, I mean, you literally won a bunch of money, but that's just crazy, like, that, that F. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you should just listen to yourself at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. But Lucas's advice was good. Yeah, I'm a financial advisor. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for sending us your confessions. Those were great. They were juicy. Um, Yeah, thanks for just confessing to us. I this know. is confession. It's really interesting learning about what other people do and like what they didn't want other people to know. But now I get to know and I'm really happy. I feel special. And all of you guys. Well, thank you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell people about the pod. And thank you guys for being the bros. We're starting a full program next week. We're going to announce, introduce it to next week. This, uh, this, if you introduce it to one of the funds and they listen to five episodes, you like get a prize. Oh, <laughs> well, oh a referral program. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're planning it right now. All right. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>